Hey everybody, it's um, Abby here. It also I, I Cura on Facebook, so just gotta clear that out of the way. I kind of just really wanted to do a free talk. I'm just really like, whoa, today. <laughs> um, before I do anything else, yeah, that's why I want to do the free talk. So I went to see the Gazette. The other day, now the other day, because yesterday I just came back from New York City. Oh my god, that concert was, it it blows my mind that it even happened. <laughs> I remind the fact that I got to, like, go to the meet and greet. And, oh my god, because that was so sweet. They're all so kind, they're just heartwarming, you know? Like, if you don't, if you didn't fall in love love them in the concert you you love them when you meet them because you th they had a very heartwarming welcome and they were very sweet and, and such and for me that just meant the world so when somebody recorded that meet and greet by the way which somebody did I just wanted to punch them in the face because that is a huge moment for people and if you could actually have some decent respect for those people, have that decent respect for the Gazette, you would not have recorded that moment. Because that's not something you record, okay? I'm sorry, but you're an asshole. And get rid of that video. Like, if you're watching, get rid of that video off your whatever social media you posted it on. Because you just not just disrespected myself. You disrespected a lot of fans and them themselves, the Gazette. So I'm just going to put that out of there for myself. But, and people who filmed the concert too, you're not any better. So, if you have some decent respect for humanity, just turn off those cameras, okay? You don't need to do that. That's just rude, okay? So, when I saw them... I was actually in the front section in front of them. Of course, I wasn't in the front row of that section. I was in the middle of it when I f when the concert started. So I was like squish. <laughs> I was close to being suffocated. And by the time I actually was starting to get suffocated, I had to move. And thankfully, I was able to move before the encore. So... Yeah, um, <laughs> it was so much that happened, like, Rookie just gave it his all, and it was amazing. They all did, too, like, Kai, like, smiled all the way through that concert, like, I don't even think there's one part of that concert he did not smile. And Ruha was just so pleasant, <laughs> oh my god, it was so cool to watch him play his guitars, especially his solo. Because he really did bring it on too. And all he, all he just made me smile actually. Because he was so He was a sweetheart even on the stage. And during the encore when he blew his kiss. It looked like he was towards our section. The section I was at. I was actually. I moved myself to the side of the front. So that way I could still see what was going on. And I was still kind of in, the, in that section. I couldn't move very far. But when I saw him blow that kiss, I was like, oh my god. I went like a too too. I was like, oh. Because it just felt so, it, it, it burnt, it, it just, it just made me feel so good. <laughs> it was so, like, oh, it was so cute and so sweet. You know, I love when he does that. Like, I I, I just love it. It just feels so, you know, it, it, it warms your heart so much. And when I Rado was out there sticking out his tongue, and he just, he was a goofball, but I love Rado because he is such a goofball. Um, everybody who knows me ha knows I have my character Annie, who is a technically a fan character, but like, she's like, she loves, like, if she was a real person, her favorite member of Gazette would be Rada. And just her, like, I felt her being like, ah, Rita, Rita, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, 
Oh my god. It was such an amazing show. I like when tomorrow never dies. He they were playing that. I was like starting to try to fall out seriously. Cause, like when you hear them play, they're like really meaning it. Like they really mean serious when they were playing Tomorrow Never Dies. And like if there's one song about like try telling people not to kill themselves that's actually serious and like actually has heart in it, it's definitely Gazette's Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh my god, like when he was like, Don't kill yourself, I was like ready to bawl my eyes out because I just I felt that assurance. And um, myself, who who goes through depression, depressive cycles, and it's through my life, I had never really been the most happiest child. So feeling that assurance just felt so good, and it just felt so warm in my heart. Um, yeah, I was like gonna cry, but. The truth is, this concert meant, like, my life to me. Like, it meant so much to me because I've been wanting to see them for eight years straight. That's as long as I've been a fan. I've been really wanting to see them. I just, I've, I've watched their stuff on YouTube. Like, people would upload it. I'd upload it their actual, like, official concert videos on YouTube. I would watch them. And I... I would just sometimes spend nights just watching them because I just loved it. You know, I watched their name is Liberty Six Guns tour backstage stuff. I loved it. Just seeing them as people. I think as I grew up and seeing them, they come out like not as like these magical gods from Mount Fuji, but like, 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 Somebody liked my comparison of that, by the way, but I think these magical, like, god, godlike creatures to, like, human beings like myself who are trying to just get through life and just doing what they really love, it, like, means the world to me. Because, you know, I, I had, I, I didn't have the best life. Like, I mean, um, I, I didn't grow up very rich. I grew up pretty damn poor pretty much the poverty line. I, I'm disabled. I'm queer. And it was such a struggle in my life because not a lot of people understand Asperger's. They just think you're weird and stupid. They don't want anything to do with you because they're afraid of, like, you know, I, they're afraid of, you know, realizing I'm a human being and I, you know, I'm not that great with socializing. I'm not that good at learning. I'm just my auditory even like even when somebody speaks I have such a hard time understanding what they're saying because my brain just doesn't I, it has to go through its cycle of translating it I think that's like the best term I could just say it's like my brain is trying to translate what you're saying and I, I'm a native English speaker myself so I definitely understand Gazette having issues trying to speak English um it's so breathtaking when I was starting to listen to them I was really really bad I actually I actually did almost kill myself and literally getting through that cycle of depression I just listened to them nonstop. I listened to them on the bus listened to them even in some of my classes like it just took me away. I learned, I was learning to stand up for myself. I was learning to kind of cope with the fact that I'm not a bad person. That I'm not stupid. I'm not, you know, I, the treatment I got was not deserved. Like, I didn't ask for it. Um, it's really hard, you know. I was made fun of all the time. Like, I was made fun of in high school to the point where I made myself a shield. I made myself a persona. I, I meant I was pretty rude to some people because of it. But it was my way of coping with 
being hurt a lot. And it hurt a lot when I was actually not feeling very well. I was actually going through my depression cycle or my manic. At some points, I did kind of have hypomania, which is why I got diagnosed with my bipolar rather than general depression. Um, and I was treated poorly, piss poorly. Like, I know some people still sort of say, go, well, well, people don't know how to deal with autistic people. It's like, yeah, but is treating somebody like a human being that hard? Like, is it this hard to kind of just show some little peak of interest in what you're saying? Like, I, I learned that the hard way. And before, I was like, maybe I'm just being ignored. Maybe I should, you know, stop talking because, you know, nobody's listening. And then by the time I did stop talking, I was, like, getting yelled at all the time for not talking. And it's like, well, I was talking, but you didn't listen to me. And it's like, well, that's your fault. And I was like, the people that called me friends in high school were always telling me how stupid I was. They, they literally, like, were as bad as the people that made fun of me. Like, you know, I did not cope very well with high school. And literally, I was pulled through by Gazette, like, literally. Like, Gazette was the only time I was ever allowed to be myself. I was allowed to be Abigail Tolar. And listening to them made me, like, be me. Like, I literally take, I don't want to forget myself. I don't want, I want to be as I am, very deeply, because that shows I can be Abigail Tolar. I can actually be myself. I can be happy drawing. I can watch my television shows, even though it is mostly aimed for kids. I can like, like them. I can make, f I can actually deserve friends that actually pay attention, that listen to me, that even share that interest in my heart. So I wasn't, like, made fun of because I really liked Danny Phantom. Like, I deserve to be treated like a human being and not, like, crap. I mean, I was always pulled down by the same people who were calling me their best friend in high school. And I'd turn around, I was on the internet, and I actually was talking to people that actually treated me like a human being. So by the time I met a lot of them, I met Cassie in like 2013, and she literally is my best friend. I met her through Gazad, and she, like, even though I was really upset, she didn't treat me like crap. She didn't go, like, well, suck it up. Like, she actually took me through those oppressive moments, and... I actually had, like, literally there, my best friend for life. Like, she's my best friend. And Puppet for my best friend, too, who also is a fellow autistic person. And although I was really sad that she couldn't come with me because she really is my best friend. But I'm getting her something from the show. I did buy her something, and I really want to give it to her because she is my best friend. Uh... Even, like, when I met everybody at the Six Gun Dinner, I wasn't... I loved the way I was treated. I mean, they loved me. They hugged me. They told me... Like, it was such a happy moment. I got to joke around, and... I felt like myself around the Six Guns. And even though I had trouble in the past online with them, like, I was actually literally almost kicked off. I was literally kicked off the demon art because I wasn't a yaoi fanatic that I didn't draw that I actually had my stuff I had to take off my a lot of my artwork with Ruki because it wasn't yaoi it wasn't anime it was actually like surrealist photog photographic I don't know what I called it then but 
like, yeah, I had my friends, like, even when I was feeling so down, they actually would, like, help me back up. And I wouldn't have not have that if it wasn't for Gazette. Like, even when I was in a hospital, I listened to Gazette nonstop. I had division. I got division. Like, I, I, I remember I, I kind of stole it, but I did buy a copy of the MP3s online after. But I listened to that CD nonstop. And it just got me through so much. It's a sort of, I, in high school, did the same thing with me. And meeting all these people, like, on the 28th, like, Oh God! Meeting everybody just warmed my heart. I felt like I had a family. I had friends. I had a group of friends of my own. <laughs> I had my own friends that loved me so much that we all united because of Gazette. And because of us also didn't have a great time in our lives, like. I know my friend Taka was bullied. Um, some of my friends were really depressed and going through such hard times because that made them feel better. I had, I even got to see a girl and finally find out that she had so much comfort because that when she went through a, a transfusion because she was sick. And a lot of my other friends, I I met people. They were so sweet. We got to talk. We got to laugh. We got to jam out. We sat in line, and then finally meeting the guys it just it warmed my heart so much because they were so sweet. Like they mean it. Like when they love, they say they love their fans. They really truly mean it. Like they're not like lying. They're not saying like that to you know, make themselves look good. They actually do mean it. That they really loved their show at NYC. They really loved, they really love us. They were, you know, and, oh God. And I just can't blame them because I felt so good seeing them. Like, I don't care if I was pushed around, I was shoved, that I was, you know, having a hard time breathing because at the end I made such great friends I had so much fun and I got to come home with the best day of my life and I literally will admit my VIP ticket was literally a birthday present to myself I am turning 23 years old on the 5th and that was that's that was my best Hey, I mean, I love everybody too. Everybody was so sweet and everybody was so kind. I mean, my, my, I rented a hotel. I rented a hotel with my friend Kai, and he was so awesome. Like, he was such a sweetheart. And you were, you know, I felt okay, you know. I wasn't like alone in New York City. I, I felt comfortable around him. He showed me places, and it was so cool. I just really. And everybody just made me so happy, and I got to laugh and feel good. Um, I and I owe it all to Kizad. I just love them so much, and they made me feel okay. They made me feel like I'm not. I'm a human being. I'm a. I'm a person. I. And if I'm treated poorly, that's not my fault. That everything's gonna be okay when it feels like the worst happened. So I'm going to wrap everything up by saying thank you so much, Gazette. Thank you so much, everybody I met. Thank you so much because you guys made my day. You guys made my life. And I love you guys so much. See you guys.